Everton on pole position. Fabian Fore, can he make the start that he needs to make here on right hand side of picture? And he does get a good gait. But so do from right behind him into Michel Fabrizio on the second of the Megabike Hondas. Also made a tremendous start. So Fabrizio, who was riding, of course, in MotoGP last season with 23 laps to go, he has skipped right through and made a brilliant start. And the two Megabike Hondas are nailed together at the front of the pack as they peel into the back stretch. And I think it might have been Fabrizio who made a move underneath the ferret at that point and grabbed the advantage going down the back straight. And uh, if ever an Italian would want to win in front of his home crowd, well, here at Misano in the boiling heat of the Adriatic course could be one nice place to start. Fabrizio then leads it, but here comes uh, the uh, Fabian Foray, always late on the brakes, a demon late breaker, sometimes outbreaking himself, of course. Has he hung on to it this time? No, he hasn't. And Fabrizio's back at the front, here comes Foray once more. Kevin Curtin in fourth place, Katsuaki Fujiwara getting uh, pressed right out of it through El Charo and through into fourth place as the dust gets kicked up uh, is number 16, Sebastian Charpentier. You've never had the pleasure of... Uh, did you never have a wild card entry in, in the, the race of the axe murderers uh, then, Mara? I did, actually, at, um, at Brands Hatch in 1998, I believe. Or, no, sorry, 1999, with the uh, Enzo De Clemente d &E Honda squad. And um, we was under the wing of uh, Garrett Tenkata, actually. And it was one of the hottest weekends we've had for a long time. And, unfortunately, my uh, engine blew. What's happened? Oh, and Fabrizio's in trouble. Oh, a despairing Fabrizio, the 20-year-old from Frascati, is pulling over with the Italia Megabyte CBR 600 and looks as if he's out of the race. Oh, that must be a bit... I mean, you know, that must be a bit hard churning for the young lad. Yeah, there's the, the trouble with the World Supersport. They get one race per weekend and, you know, it finishes uh, on the first lap and it, it must be disheartening, but it's one of those Honda electrical faults again. Well, Fabian Forey then, who uh, was lapping at 137.62, uh, was against uh, Fujiwara's 137.639 during qualifying. So he didn't have a, a huge gap, but he certainly all opened up one heck of a gap in the early stages of this race. Um, and here comes Fujiwara trying to make ground, and he dips underneath. And I, I didn't quite see who he dipped underneath the bike of just then. Who was that uh, that he was just catching then? Can't quite make um... <sighs> We're, we're good on checking out. We're good with our eyesight, checking out numbers here, me and Mara. We're, we're working on it. And I think it might have been Simone Sana. I think it might have been Simone Sana, the, uh, the X125 GP rider, 161. Yeah, it was Simone Sana who's got a, a, a mystifying 161 oh, on his crash bike. at the back. Who was that? Someone went down. It looked like one of the... Could have been one of the Yamaha Germany R1s. Mm, Ouch, uh, that looked painful. That's certainly very Yamaha colour, but it's a Ducati, isn't it? It might be Nanelli. Oh, it's Gianluca Nanelli. It was the fastest Ducati in the race, and he's just gone very much end over end, but seems to be managing to stagger to his... Oh, is he... Sta yes, he is, yeah, thankfully, yeah. managing to stagger to his feet. So the broad-beaming Gianluca Nanelli. Oh, what a massive high side. Ouch. Oh, that threw him onto his face, really. That looked really uncomfortable. Usually on a high side, Murray, you get right over onto your shoulders. Yeah, but you tend, tend to find the faster the high side, the further you get thrown to the side. That it's the slow ones, the first and second gear corner that tend to launch you up into the sky and then land you on your bumps. But uh, it's, I mean, it, land, it looks like it landed okay, it didn't hit anything. So hopefully, he'll be going to be up and just a bit sore tomorrow. Oh, what a shame then for Gianluca Nanelli, who'd qualified in sixth place on bike number 69. So the 31-year-old from Firenze on the SC Caracchi Ducati is out big time. Fabian Fore still leads. The, the chasing pack, headed by Kevin Curtin, Chapongier dips underneath his teammate, Katsuaka Fujiwara, into Tremento and very neatly grabs third place. Two of the Kawasaki's well up there. I was saying to Mara before we came on air that uh, it's unbelievable to me that Lightspeed has a dejected Michel Fabrizio trudges back to his Italia megabike pit. Uh, Lightspeed Kawasaki, their uh, their youngster Matteo uh, Baiocchio is uh, constantly at the back of the grid. He's 31st and last on the grid today, and yet uh, Cristiano Migliorati steps in on the same bike and qualifies three seconds quicker in ninth place on the grid. There's something wrong there somewhere. So, you know, it, it, it just can't be the bike. No, <laughs> nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that ZX6. 
Kevin Curtin's there, the two Hondas right behind him. But Curtin, who uh, was on the rostrum here last year, Kevin Curtin was uh, had a good finish here last year. And he certainly uh, looks like he's capable of having another good finish here this year as well. Meanwhile, at the front, the man in charge, Fabian Foria, 1.5 second advantage over Curtin. Charpentier, three tenths further back third. Fujirara, Parks and Sana making up the top six. Antonello is the first of the Kawasaki's. The Bertocchi ZX6 there of Ant Alexandro Antonello is seventh. Eighth is Javier Forest having one of his best outings for Alstara Corona Suzuki on back number 13. Charpentier is making a, a bit of a charge now with a 38.8 fastest lap of the race so far. And that's scary how quick the super sports are around this uh, neat little track here. As Charpentier just squirts neatly underneath Kevin Curtin. So Sebastian Charpentier keen to make ground back up in the championship. Of course, it's tight at the top of the championship. He needs the points. Here goes Fujiwara. He needs them too. And he dives underneath Kevin Curtin and very neatly slices open a bit of a gap going into El Charo. Now carrying Fabian Foray, hold on to this advantage. He's got two hard-charging Winston Tenkati Hondas behind him. 38.8 confirming what Mara had noticed that Chaponche set the fastest lap so far. World Super Sports race winners, of course, Carl Muggeridge took the... Uh, the full haul of 25 points for Tenkate Honda last season. And uh, Fabian Foray won two years in a row, 2002 for Honda, 2003 for Kawasaki. The one race here where he really managed to light up the Kawasaki during his year with them, with the, uh, the factory team. We might actually be seeing Fujiwara make a move on uh, Charpentier, yeah? He's, he seems to be holding him up in a few corners. He's running into the, into the back of him. Fujiwara's carried, uh, at least is uh, reasonably healthy this weekend. He's carried a few uh, injuries where he's lobbed himself during training and stuff in recent rounds. So he's always been struggling a little bit, but he's certainly looking confident now. Yeah. And of course, with Honda having selected him to... Uh, they haven't yet decided actually how the four men are going to partner up for the Suzuka 8 hours. Uh, it looks more likely that Vermoulin will be with Fujiwara and uh, Tadio Kada with... Uh, Kianari, but it hasn't actually been decided yet and uh, Fujiwara will like to impress them before he goes over to test the bike and uh, someone out to impress there is a uh, former Aprilia test rider Antonello who's trying to find a way beneath uh, Simono Sana. Sana was a pretty handy 125 Grand Prix rider once upon he a time. Was, yeah, very good. He certainly didn't translate that to speed in World Supersports because he, 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 he really got obliterated in World Supersports when he came into it with Belgada in 2003. Yeah, it's, it's a different ball game, Jack, really. I mean, you, you're going from a, a 125 Grand Prix bike that weighs next to nothing to a, a converted road bike on treaded tyres, so it, it'll take him a long time to adapt. But you know, I'll give him time, I'm sure he can do it. At the end of the day, it's a motorcycle and he, can, he knows how to ride one. But... but yeah, but even as someone as vastly experienced as Jürgen van der Goberg, who was on the rostrum here in third mm. place last year, he never really got the hang of the World Super Sports scene. Yeah, I, I just I think he could go past when he was on his own, but it's just the uh, the axe murderers, as they're well known for, you know, the elbows and everything like that. He, he, he just didn't seem comfortable with all, all the, the bumping and barging, but on his own he could, he could be as fast as anybody. Uh, almost unnoticed into that, Brock Parks on this, his second of the Yamaha Deutschland bikes is sitting there in fifth place. But uh, the gap at the front could just close down as this gravy train of uh, Charpentier, Fujiwara and Kevin Curtin begins to close the gap. Just try and ease it back towards the race leader. Foray's actually up the pace by two tenths of a second that lap, so he's opened up to 1.8 seconds now. So just to prove me completely wrong there, Fabian Foray looks to be defending his lead. Well, I thought it was quite the opposite. <laughs> it's amazing what a telephoto lens could do to a man's eyesight. Into Tremonto, the race leader, Fabian Foray. His 60th World Super, World Super Sports race here. And he's being chased by uh, Sebastian Charpentier having his 66th World Superbike race. I'm quite impressed with number 12, uh, Xavier Forrest, the 19-year-old Spaniard on the Alstara Corona Suzuki because he's not really shown any sort of form so far in World Super Sports, but he's certainly beginning to get to grips with this race. Looks like he's closing Antonello up a little bit, doesn't it? He has, yeah. Sebastian Charpentier, he's the man who wants to grab points ahead of that man, his teammate Fujiwara. He's got to stay in front.
Kevin Curtin holding station there in third place. The extremely veteran Australian, whose uh, career has constantly swapped between Australia and Europe. He's never managed to make, really make it stick in Europe, although this is his second full season over here in succession, having gone back to Australia in 2003. Strangely enough, the fastest uh, fastest lap on that lap was a 139.1 for Charpentier and a 139.18 for Fujiwara. And that really did uh, put a bit of a squeeze on Fabian Fauré's advantage. Down again to 1.5. Further back downfield, Piers Giorgio Pontempi, former World Endurance champ way back in the day with the 750 Kawasaki. And uh, a regular in World Superbikes and third place man in World Supersports as well. The, uh, the now just racing primarily in Italy. Talking about racing primarily in Italy, Fabrizio Pirovano came out of came out of retirement rather unexpectedly at the age of we don't even know what, and uh, still able to race as you would expect into it. The dapper little fellow into his uh, race leathers uh, popped in the fastest qualifying time for the GSXR 750 Suzuki Cup this weekend. And if there is going to be a dangerous race, that will be the race. <laughs> that, that is where the, the serious axe murderers go, not just these uh, super sport. Yeah, the, the kids with a bit of uh, a bit of uh, some very real ambition. And if they, if they set themselves a target man of someone like Pirovano with his old proven track record and uh, and uh, race history. By they're going to go for each other. And Pirovano, the thing is that he's just as likely to give them back as well. I was going to say that he'll thrive on anything. Anybody who comes up the inside will just lean on him and shut the door. <laughs> As they cross the line this time, that advantage has been trimmed back to 1.265. So Fabian Forre's lone Italian megabike Honda is just having those wretched Tencate Winston guys close down on him. Lars Slato on the team, Claffey Honda number uh, number 25 involved in a battle there with Mariottini and Stefan Chambon, the uh, former champion who's uh, been struggling a little bit to get to grips with bike number eight, the uh, Gill Motorsport CBR 600 after many, many years on Suzuki. His little brother Boris Shambong won a round uh, of the S2 World Supermoto Championship, of course, last weekend at Melk in Austria. But I think uh, Bonbon Jumi struggling to match that from back there. On the split time, Jack Charpente is down to 0.9 behind Foray now, so he's actually really, really charging hard and starting to break away from Fujiwara as well. So Charpentier pulling back uh, Fabian Foray. The Frenchman has really found uh, his niche in life this year. He began to show some real pace racing for the Team Claffey Honda squad last year. But uh, now very, very comfortable in the, uh, the surroundings of the Dutch run Tenkate team. I forgot to ask you what happened in the heat of Brands Hatch back in that World Super Sports <laughs> race, mate. My bike broke down. Oh, did it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you in the points at the time? Uh, no, it was about a second uh, second lap. It was one of them weekends where we just decided to forget and enjoyed the sun. What a shame, because Brands actually is a lovely circuit. One of my favourites. Here we are at uh, the relatively flat, well, in comparison to Brands Hatch, the very relatively flat expanse of the Autodromo Santa Monica. And Fabian Foray is at the front with uh, Sebastian Charpentier, a man who started his career as a teenager riding 50cc mopeds in uh, his, uh, his pursuer, now 31 years old even though he still uh, acts and looks like a kid. They're dropping the, uh, the gallant Yamaha there of Kevin Curtin and Brock Parks is coming under pressure from Simone Sana. Now uh, there you are, just after I, I dismissed any suggestion that Sana could come back and make a mark in this race but uh, he is now in sixth place and putting the pressure on and that's uh, Antonello catching uh, Xavier Forrest or is it Forrest who's got the better of uh, Alessandro Antonello and Antonello is shortly going to be uh, caught by an even uh, more veteran Italian than himself the hard charging Migliorati who of course used to be a regular with the uh, Team Italia Suzuki's in the late 90s in World Super Sports. And they're proof of the cap, the fact that the gap is down to just a squeak over a second between race leader Foray and second place man Charpentier. It's down to 0.6 of a second on the second split, so it looks I like Foray is, 
he's got the first part of the circuit dialed in and uh, Charfonte catches him up with the second and third splits. So right now we have definitely at three-quarter distance. That gap is nothing like one second as they charge across the line. And it has, in fact, gone down to 0 0.608 as they cross the line. And Charpentier really putting the pressure on. He's a long-standing association with Honda, started by his domination of the Honda CB500 Cup back in 1996. Honda France took him to the European Supersport Championship the following year and saw him beat a certain James Tolton to victory at the Brands Hatch Round. That was back in 1997. He won't do it now, though. No, probably, possibly not. Possibly not. <laughs> but I tell you, the way he's riding at the moment, I just wonder how much ambition he's got. I haven't talked to him about his ambition to go world superbike racing, you know. Yeah, it, it, it looks good. So, you know, there's... Why not? Get him up there. Because the, the, the uh, Tenkate camp, Gerrit Tenkate has, uh, has successively awarded World Superbike rides to his, his young Australian hot guns when they've won the World Supersports Championship for him. Yeah, and that's good. That's how teams should work. You know, you, you should reward riders when they win championships for you and move them up to the class that they want to be in. It, it gives everybody something to aim for and, it, and it's good for the team relationships as well. Chapogia, he's got he's, he's raced against some great time, talent in his time because uh, he, when he... Uh, he, he used to. He moved from mopeds to scooters. Now there's a big step. And back in those in those days, on the scooters, he came up against Randy Dapunia and Sylvain Joantoli, and uh, was, he was beating him as well. He's raced against me as well, Jack. Has he raced against you? Yeah, he beat me. <laughs> and uh, who else has he beat? He com he's, he's competed against uh, Regis Laconi and uh, the former 250 world champion Olivier Jacques as well when they were riding 125cc GP Hondas in France. He's making a move. He's gone and he's through. making a move on Fabian Foray and he dives underneath the ferret. And uh, I don't think Fabian's got any reply to that right now. Can he pull one out of the bag? Can he just hang in there? Um, I'm surprised that Fujiwara's not been able to move with Charpentier. He's not been able to close the gap, but uh, he'll desperately want at least to get through into second place. That pass looked very, very easy, so he's got plenty in the bag, and that looks like Foray's going to just drop off the pace a little bit, maybe into Fujiwara's um, grasp. Look, straight through, it's, there's no protest from Foray at all, just straight through and clean. That was a 139.2 from Foray, half a second quicker, sorry, from Chaponte, half a second quicker than Foray, and uh, Fujiwara also was in the 139.2 bracket, so... Uh, Foray is certainly going to find that he's going to get pestered by another Winston Tenkate charging CBR 600 very soon. Unless Foray is just sandbagging and it, 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 you know, he knew he has been closed down and thought he'll see what uh, Charpente had before he upped the pace again. Well, remember Fabian did win here in 2002 and 2003, the first time with Tenkate Honda, the second time with Cower. So it could just be that he's thinking, yep, yeah, I've got something that I can sort out with this man yet. Both of them, of course, successful in World Endurance Championship racing as well. They've seen plenty of one another over the years. Yeah, I'm sure over the next couple of laps, if uh, Charpente doesn't break for it, then we're in for the, a bit of a dust-up at the end. That's exactly the opposite to what you said about 30 seconds ago, Mara. I'm, I'm allowed to change my mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get, I'll let you off this once. <laughs> Crossing the finishing line there. Boom, boom, boom. There's the three Hondas. Uh, well clear now of uh, a lonesome Kevin Curtin, and then behind Curtin, Brock Parks has got uh, Simone Sanna's CBR 600 all over his back wheel. And Fabian Foray has definitely picked himself up and decided that uh, he can live with the pace that's being set ahead of him here, and he's going to have another goal. He's going to have another snap back. Katsuaki Fujiwara who's been racing more than 20 years. He's still only 29 years old. <laughs> God, you should be good after you've been doing it that long, <laughs> shouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but he always, he's always smiling. You've got, uh, you've got three very happy guys here. They're usually happy, smiley guys, except when, except when the ferret throws a tantrum. He is prone a little bit to a bernicular spat of temper, I must admit. We all are at uh, times, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I've never seen, never seen any evidence of it for Charpentier or Fujiwara. Never. It's just always such a, yeah, it's Chapogge, he loves his snowboarding and stuff. He's the kind of kicked back uh, winter sportsman from Biarritz kind of uh, feel to him. Is that and like that just the surfing and the pun? He likes sledging. Well, uh, not the sort of no, not the sort of winter sports that we would think oh, of. No, no, <laughs> snowboarding and rather more extreme stuff like that. He, he's he's really into he and his mates and surfing and stuff. Yeah, he likes that sort of gear. 
Incidentally, uh, Fujiwara's little t two year old son, Hiroto, is already addicted to a little mini bike that he rides around on. So if Fujiwara started racing at eight, I've got a feeling that Hiroto Fujiwara just might come in a bit earlier. We've got half a second separating the first three now, so it could get interesting. There's Garrett Tenkata in the middle. Ronald Tenkati on the left, the two cousins just relaxing and watching their riders do all the hard work because this is the point when they can't do anything about it. It's all down to the boys on the track. And uh, the boys on the track doing them pretty proud at the moment. <laughs> now, Roger Burnett once tried to explain to me that you, that the further, that, that style of uh, Fujiwara, that's, a, uh, you know, got a touch of the kind of uh, Whittams and Toyhurts about it. it what it can do sometimes is, is unload the back wheel a bit and give you that tendency to break the back wheel out when, yeah. you, you, when your body weight gets so far inboard. What it actually does is your body weight is inside the bike, so it's more or less working for the front tyre and uh, taking weight off the back, which just lets the back tyre break away. But the, these bikes are that small, it, it probably looks worse than it is with him hanging off that, because he's, he's, he's probably, what is he, five foot seven, five eight? He's, it, it, Fujiwara is one of the taller lads in world supersport, but he, he, he makes it so much more evident, that sort of sequence of breaking of brakes that the rear tyre kicks out on him. He's obviously comfortable with that, that's the way that he tends to ride it. Oh yeah, for sure, I mean, the way he keeps the bike up on the fat part of the tyre is, is the way to ride one when the tyres have gone past the best. He just picks it up on the exit. Uh, we're approaching, um, we're just approaching half distance now and we're also approaching a commercial break here at Eurosport. Sebastian Charpentier, Fabian Foray, Katsuaki Fujiwara, neck and neck here, round six, World Super Sports Champion. Let's see what was happening on the track, thank you. Uh, Sebastian Charpentier in second place, Fabian Foray, third place and almost grabbing second as they went into uh, Del Charo was number 21, Katsuaki Fujiwara. So, uh, Long-standing friends and rivals, the two Frenchmen, Charpentier and Foré, still holding on at the front. They actually rolled together the first time that uh, Sebastian Charpentier rolled for Gerrit Tancate was uh, in the Spanish Championship, where alongside Fabian Foré, the two of them riding for the, uh, the Kent Carte team in some Spanish Championship rounds. That was back in 2000 and, uh, then 2002. Charpentier yeah, also uh, famously took the VTR 1000 SP1 to an impressive debut victory at the Le Mans 24 Hours in 2000 with William Cost and Sebastian Jambert. It's one of these guys who can uh, turn his hand to almost anything, but uh, I think what he's proved is that in the end, specialising a bit kind of does you good. And, uh, you know, he's really come on as a world super sports rider. Now he's focused on it properly. Yeah, just concentrating on, on one race series is... Uh, it just it, you know, lets you fine-tune everything. It's... It's better than spreading yourself around too thinly. Fabian Foray, the uh, the guy who has been a twice previously a winner here, though, he's, he he does get on well with this track, and although he's still not yet by any means restored to full fitness after that uh, major accident he suffered at Brands Hatch last year, he's still a very determined little guy when he gets on a motorcycle. A man who was inspired, incidentally, you probably can't see any similarity in style, but he was inspired by Kenny Roberts Sr. originally. Who was your racing hero, Mara? Did you have anybody that you particularly looked up to? James Whitton. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling that wasn't an answer I can accept, but nonetheless, it was an exam paper I set, so I guess I've got to go along with it. Well, I've really, I mean, Wayne Rainey and Kevin Schwantz were my all-time all heroes. Schwantz just purely because he was so flamboyant, he was either winning races or he was on his ear. And Rainey was riding a bike that wasn't as good as everything else, and he just looked inch perfect all the time. And he was just the ultimate professional, was Rainey. The man leading at this race at the moment, the Winston Tenkate Honda, number 16, Sebastian Charpentier. Also has a great love of uh, house music and soul. He's a good, a good DJ, Charpentier. He occasionally, he yeah. kind of takes the, he takes to the turntable at uh, in Sunday night paddock parties and things. And does a good job. It's all that boom, boom, bass rubbish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't be doing for that. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good job. You don't normally have to spend Sunday night in a paddock, yeah. then. Uh, at least uh, abroad with these guys. They love it, don't they? I think they're in a beef. Well, you virtually are here. This is like the Italian Ibiza, and hence the huge nightclubs like the one that Winston Tenkate uh, took over last night.
Incidentally, we didn't stay out late, as indeed did not the riders, although Steve Booth has confessed through bleary eyes this morning that he staggered back into his hotel at three o'clock this morning. We saw him coming in, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me, mate. You may have done. I was asleep. <laughs> Fabian Foray, a loving, look at that, cat and mouse, he's not letting Charpentier get away. He knows him, he loves him, and he wants to beat him. Not necessarily in that order. Not necessarily in that order. It's like Fudjuara's Fudjuara's just dropping off a little bit. He's, it, he sometimes seems to have a wee bit of a problem just sustaining the speed right through the race. Uh, on that lap, we had a, a 38.821 from Charpentier, 38.93 for a, and a 39.05 for Kawasaki Fujiwara. Oh, we got, that could be Fujiwara Kawasaki. No, it couldn't. It could be Kawa <laughs> Katsuaki on, Fujiwara. <laughs> I'm, just, oh, I'm sorry. Brain is cooked. I'm the new boy. I'm supposed to make the mistakes. <laughs> well, it could give us a bit of uh, air conditioning, couldn't it? It well, might make yeah. a difference. Yeah. And uh, here we've got uh, Simone Sana trying to get to grips with number 23, Brock Parks, who was originally brought over, of course, by Wayne Gardner. Wayne Gardner posted the boy over here and then kind of left him to his own devices. And unfortunately, the result of one, that was that Brock had a horrendous crash at Paddock Bend on uh, the uh, NCR Ducati in World Superbikes and bust his ankles up and just made a real mess of himself. And it was uh, quite a long road back to recovery from the young Aussie. And uh, to be honest, he's kind of been niggled by injuries since, and I never feel we've quite seen the best of him. Yeah, when he, when he has been good on the ten car bike, he, he was uh, getting sideways and out of shape, but he can make a motorcycle complaint, so you know, the potential's there. It's like you say, he just, he just needs a good year with a real good, strong team and a healthy year, and uh, then we'll see what he's, what he's capable of. It, it doesn't seem to be able to... He hasn't so far got tuned into the Yamaha to the same extent, has he? No. Uh, here is Cristiano Migliorati, the 36-year-old uh, super vet, pressing uh, Antonello on the two Kawasaki's. On that lap at the front, the leader, 38.82 and one and four a, I beg your pardon, 39.7 and four a, 39.8. So it seems that Charpentier's just got that fractional edge. As we uh, check back with the, the veteran Aussie Kevin Curtin from Sydney. He's in a pretty lonesome fourth place on that uh, YZF R6. Still pushing though. But oh, he never does anything else, does he, this guy? Here we go. Fabian Foray, you keep thinking, well, Foray's certainly got some parts of this track dialed out a little better than Charpentier because he keeps nosing right back to him. Yeah. He seems to be pretty hot through that first section. The battle for the lead. So Pontier at the moment just edging the advantage over Fabian Foray. Foray, of course, was the World Super Sports Champion in 2002 and then got snapped up by Kawasaki for their wonderful new uh, all singing, all dancing ZX6 and could only manage ninth place. I mean, it's Foray's not on his shoulder yet today. No, nope. he doesn't. He really, really does it anymore. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know who's hammered it out of him, but uh, because it did used to be a quite terrifying habit. Every corner it was before, wasn't it? When he was in close battles. And both of these guys at the front, uh, having you know, were, uh, have become and definitely charpentier has got the second half of the circuit yeah. better nailed than the first half. At this point, with four laps to go, we might expect for it to make up a bit of ground through these uh, the opening sequence of rights and lefts. Yeah, but if he's got the second part and the last part dialed, that's the, the place where he's going to be dangerous, and that's the part you know just before the checkered flag. So that could be a good sign for a bit of nerfing on. Yeah, it certainly could. Oh, there's, there's Steve Booth in the foreground there, the Winston Tenkate PR man, looking uh, in remarkably good shape for one out so late last night. Fujiwara. But uh, just to prove me completely wrong, Chaponte seems to have managed to hold off the mega bike. It, I think it's just that he's so hard on the brakes down that back straight oh and a bit too hard and only just holds it on the deck and uh, Fujiwara must have been encouraged by that and he arrows right back up the inside of Tremonto to uh, see if he can find a way through we're now going to see if Forrest had anything in the bag it's probably dropped a second with that, that small uh, mistake so if he can pull it back now then we're in for a good finish 
Oh, you had to, did you have to let the brakes off then? Is yeah. that the only answer when you get yourself yeah. into that squirrely yeah. situation? You run out into the dirt, dirty part of the track and it's just grin and bear it. Well, he grinned and bared it, bore it, and he's still there in second. And uh, we're already going to hit some of uh, the back markers here. Which uh, probably isn't the, uh, the sort of time you want to be doing it, really. Oh, Number 80, Anello on a Honda. Obviously not one of these super-fast CBR 600s then. He's just been lapped. And uh, that was just the sort of mistake that Charpentier needed to drag out of Foray because uh, Fabian just getting uh, overreaching himself down the back straight uh, into what he obviously saw as being his, uh, his major overtaking opportunity. Yeah, he's dropped, dropped 1.3 seconds now, so I, I don't think he's going to pull that back unless he's really got something in his locker. At the moment behind these car guys, Sanna's still there pressing parks. Forrest has gone through in seventh place. Eighth, Migliorati ahead now of Antonello. And Lauslato on the Team Claffy bike. The Finnish rider is 10th. 11th is uh, Harms Honda. 12th is Barry Veneman, the, uh, the man leading the Dutch Super Sports Championship for Suzuki. Ahead of uh, Stiggy Stigfeldt, number 116, 13th. Mariatini and Stefan Chambong on the Jill Motorsport uh, Honda. I don't expense, I don't enjoy seeing Bonbon this far down the field, I must admit. But he's ahead of Ivan Goy, another of the X125 GP guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame for Sean Bonny, he's, he's switched to Honda and it just never seems to have clicked, he's maybe just been on Suzuki that long, that it's part of him and the Honda doesn't do what he wants it to do. It seems to me that if you switch to a Tenkati Honda, it seems to do what you want it to do, because Fujiwara has kind of been in the frame pretty much from the start, winning that opening race. Yeah, the Tenkati bikes are, are renowned for being a fast motorcycle and they, they keep going as well, don't they? So, uh, Gary, it's obviously doing something right. So uh, that was was that a ten car to prepped engine that let go on you at Brands Hatch when you had that one wild card ride? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was due to the um, we were sat on the line too long, and like I was saying yesterday about the the engines, the heat soaking back through, it, it, it just boiled itself, and we had water coming out the top of the radiator cap and everywhere. So, you know, it, it was unfortunate, but it, it couldn't be helped really. Well, in which case, the superbikes have done well today because they, they just have suffered some long delays, haven't they? Yeah, if you watch, there was blowing airlines oh, through the radiators. Oh, what is Charpentier doing? Look, mate, we know that you like mountain... We know that you like cycling, rather. We know that you like uh, messing around hill climbing, but stay on the track. Foray's last lap was a 39.3 and, and Charpentier's was a 39.7, so there may be a bit of drama yet to come. Uh, he perhaps he just lost it all when he kicked the earth up on that yeah. last lap. But look at Foray, he's not been detuned by his moment going down there. He's really uh, giving it everything as we're on the penultimate lap now. And that's the back marker, number 80, Alessio Anello. But that is the fourth place man. Number 11, Kevin Curtin, the 39-year-old from Sydney. One of the oldest fellas in this, uh, if not the oldest fella in this category of racing. I beg your pardon, it'll be between him and Stefan Chambong. And in fact, um, it's actually Stefan Chambong because uh, the Frenchman uh, born in 65 as opposed to 66. Kevin Curtin, relatively youthful and just turned 39 on the 22nd of May. I've still got years left in me then, Jack. You have? Oh, years and years, <laughs> mate. Especially when you come across wild-eyed men like this and uh, the amount of effort that they put into their racing. The blue flag out to let uh, Anello know that he needs to get out of the way, but he's been doing that quite well. Foray's down to point three on the second split. This is so point be... three, eight, three of a second he's between on. the leaders, and he really is on it. Fabian Foray throwing everything at Sebastian Charpentier as we go into the final lap. So Foray, can he celebrate his 60th World Super Sports race with a third race victory here in Misano at the San Marino round? The 32-year-old from Angoulême in France, the team Megabout, Megabike Italia. Oh, and he had another big moment. He's pushing it so hard. Found uh, the Curvone Veloce. Is he pushing it too hard? Sebastian Charpentier taking uh, imperious m moves to try and break the toll. He knows he's there, that's why he's trying to block him, but it's, it's backfired because he's right on him now. So Foray versus Charpentier, the final lap here, and Fabian has clung in there, giving it everything, and uh, is proving that the, uh, the 
the team at the uh, team mega bike honda is really pretty good oh, moment he's gone he's wide he's missed the apex altogether going into del charo but charponche for once takes a snap look over his left shoulder and uh, he could see the wild dark brown eyes of the ferret right there behind him behind that dark visor but he's still got a bit of an advantage for the Winston Ten Carter team. Yeah. And that, that, the 25 points he would take home against the 16 of Katsuaki Fujiwara would be pretty handy in this championship. That mistake's cost him now. He's got too much to do. I'm sure he has. So the dip round through the final chicane and the race win surely is going to go to the Frenchman. Sebastian Charpoche, Tancate, Winston Honda takes it from Fabian Forre's Megabank Italia CBR 600. And the third Honda in that Honda 123 clean sweep for Katsuaki Fujiwara. And uh, their rider, Sebastian Charpoche, takes victory. Forre second, Fujiwara third, Kevin Curtin a lonely fourth. Brock Parks finally escapes from Simone Sana to uh, hang on to fifth place. And Xavier Forrest, that late lunge by the uh, Alstara Corona Suzuki puts the Spaniard up to seventh place.